Hi there, I'm John McMillan, and welcome to this edition of PCB Tech Talk, the podcast where we'll be talking about design tools, the EDA industry, and the questions that you're asking. I'll be bringing in special guests from time to time, including subject matter experts and EDA industry leaders. So be sure to subscribe to this podcast and let me know the topics you'd like to discuss. And if you'd like to be my guest right here on PCB Tech Talk. Every step taken during the printed circuit board design process is taken purposefully. PCBs are essentially complex puzzles where the designer takes a specified list of components and a schematic diagram, typically with multiple sets of rules and constraints, then following industry standards, guidelines, and best practices, places and connects them precisely for fabrication and use in electronic products. Today, I'll be discussing seven habits that highly efficient PCB designers take as they study, prepare, visualize, strategize, and complete PCB designs. Habit number one, paying attention to details. From creating the schematic symbols to polishing off the layout for fabrication, assembly, and test, even the smallest missed detail can make or break a printed circuit board design. Efficient PCB designers make it a point to understand every aspect of the design flow, and when in doubt, they check things out. Preparation is key, and it starts long before the PCB layout tool is launched. From building schematic symbols to component land patterns from scratch to obtaining them from tool libraries or online resources, PCB designers check them out. Why? Because they can't afford for them to be incorrect no matter the source since a single incorrect symbol or land pattern alone can result in a costly board respin. Taking time to review the design's bill of materials and the component data sheets to verify both the component's dimensions and pinout is time well spent. Understanding details, such as which components support gate and pen swapping, can enable designers to optimize placement and routing during the PCB layout phase. Defining alternate package types for component and solder side placement can save PCB real estate. Some surface mount LAM patterns may even be optimized by including predefined breakout and fan out vias and thermal pads. An efficient designer will even identify opportunities to recommend schematic changes such as replacing individual resistors with a resistor network, just as an example. Other details, like defining placement boundaries within LAN patterns, will ensure minimum component spacing is optimized and detectable by design rule checks. Enhancing a component silt screen, particularly on high pin count devices with notations that identify pins, can help engineers and technicians during prototype debugging. Whether it's adding additional stitching vias to connect power or ground fills and planes or additional silt screen notations, effective PCB designers understand all of the electrical design aspects and requirements necessary for an optimal design. The second habit, study, plan, strategize, execute, and be prepared to regroup quickly. Efficient PCB designers must become familiar with the schematic and think multiple steps ahead. Understanding the design schematic enables the designer to expedite placement. For example, defining groups or rooms of associated components helps to expedite component placement. Understanding the applications for discrete components like decoupling capacitors and bypass resistors, why and where they're needed, their proximity to component leads, and even when necessary on unused pins. Efficient PC designers also know the value of setting up the layout session properly and are very resourceful. Many designers develop and save starter templates for different design starts that can include the designer's tool operational preferences, such as hotkeys that execute specific routines, color mapping, default trace widths, and layer stack-up definitions. They know how to apply design constraints and rules that ensure they are followed during placement and interactive and auto-routing phases. They may develop route studies and strategies that prioritize nets in order to ensure that even the most extensive rules-driven designs are accomplished. And let's face it, changes happen. There can be a variety of different reasons for design updates. Perhaps the discovery that a component is no longer available, or a component like an FBGA required a new pinout. It is not uncommon for a PCB designer to get an updated net list or perhaps several updates during the layout phase. The ability to regroup and adjust quickly is critical for PCB designer efficiency, especially if the design's release schedule is time to market critical. Efficient designers often create phased or daily backup versions of the design as part of their process, enabling them to easily revert back to an earlier version if it expedites the update process. The good news is that efficient PCB designers are prepared for change, and they get better 
smarter, and faster with every design they complete. The third habit is visualization. Component placement is a critical step and sets the stage for a successful PCB design layout. Component orientations, top or solder placement, spacing that avoids shadowing and ensures optimal solderability, and testing are just a few of the details that designers are aware of and plan for and visualize. Factors such as aligning components and breakout vias help to ensure that routing lanes are not blocked. Efficient PCB designers can study a rat nest of connections and begin to visualize and plan a routing strategy before the first trace is connected. They know what should be routed manually and what can be auto-routed. Efficient PCB designers may even use specific techniques to steer routing by placing route boundaries or temporary fences and keep out areas. Efficient PCB designers visualize the design not only from a layout perspective, but also from a manufacturing perspective. They are aware that fabricators have their own internal processes and design rule checks. Details such as knowing which components require additional placement room during layout, perhaps driven with placement boundaries for example, can minimize or totally eliminate rework time after boards are fabricated. Next, habit number four. Value working with and consulting with peers. In the infamous words of singer Vanilla Ice's rap song, Ice Ice Baby, stop, collaborate, and listen, efficient PCB designers don't work in a vacuum. They understand the value of collaboration. For example, early on, they work closely with mechanical design teams to ensure that the design's board outline, mounting holes, and all physical interfaces such as connectors, LEDs, and displays, etc., all those locations are adhered to. And when identified, they even provide valuable feedback to mechanical teams that can improve the design. They think about the end product, embrace ECAD MCAD collaboration, and keep the end product in mind throughout the PCB layout phase. Understanding the design's requirements such as design rules and signal integrity constraints that drive connectivity is a must. PCBs may even have specific signal integrity engineers that utilize models, run simulations, and apply strict routing and timing rules such as defining net topologies and differential pairs with minimum and maximum trace lengths, match lengths, maximum separation, and so on. Understanding and planning for how nets with T-points like memory buses or clocks that require tuning consume board real estate are some examples. They have a relationship with PCB fabricators and understand that designing for manufacturability, assembly, and testability is necessary. Designing with fabrication in mind ensures that any traces are not compromised, perhaps by being too close to guide pins, edges, or mounting holes. Also, knowing how and when to apply things like copper thieving at the layout level, perhaps in relation to RF circuitry, can avoid the possible impact should they be left to be or unexpectedly added by the fabricator. Understanding that even the slightest adjustments to the PCB's controlled impedance traces made by the fabricator to compensate for their processes can cause unexpected design performance. Collaborating is essential to PCB design success and depending on the size of the business and complexity of design. Collaborating can include component and model libraries, EMC, thermal, QC, and NPI engineers, and even board fabricators. That said, even the best PCB designers understand the value of peer reviews. Some designers can be so involved that something as simple as a missing or misplaced reference designator is overlooked or perhaps noticing that non-functional pads on internal layers were not removed. Habit number five is striving for perfection. Do you remember a class in school where getting an A grade was attainable for a score of 95 and it was good enough? Well, that's certainly not passing in PCB design. In fact, even the smallest error, such as an incorrect pad size or a single trace that's too close to a mounting hole, can result in having to respin a PCB. Efficient PCB designers do everything they can to achieve design perfection. From online design rule checks and designing for manufacturing and assembly checks, every effort is made to ensure that the design work is accurate. Design reviews are critical in order to eliminate ambiguity between design stakeholders. Effective PCB designers often utilize specific post-design programs that combine the capabilities of design for manufacture and new product introduction. These tools ensure a smooth transition to fabrication, assembly, and test from the PCB design environment. These design for fabrication analysis tools can check the fabrication files and even flag the problems directly in the layout environment for immediate correction prior to sending out designs for manufacturing. 
They can also review bill of material data and alternate sources of supply for assembly. Habit number six, continue to learn. All PCV design steps, processes, and procedures referenced throughout this podcast are derived from education, training, and hands-on experience. First and foremost, a strong foundation is absolutely essential to being a PCB designer, especially and with the pace with which new components, technologies, and processes are evolving. Continuing education is a must in electronic product design. Continuing education includes keeping up with the latest industry standards, including IPC, ANSI, MIL, etc., as well as PCB fabrication and assembly processes. Technologies like the Internet of Things and rigid flex circuits are becoming commonplace in today's electronics, from automotive to medical to consumer and beyond. PCB designers contend with the constant stream of new and improved components, packages, fabrication and manufacturing, pre- and post-test and assembly processes as well. Effective PCB designers understand that they are not an island, but are rather part of a greater community of designers with a common goal. They subscribe to publications like PCDNF and Circuit Assembly. They are either members of and or regularly attend IPC chapter meetings and conferences, and may even present papers to peers at PCB conferences. Many PCB designers even seek industry credentials or certifications through training and testing like IPC's Certified Interconnect Designer Programs. This brings us to habit number seven. Their designs reflect their passion. Inasmuch as canvas is the medium to an artist, PCB monitors are the virtual canvas for PCB designers. In fact, given an identical design database to 10 different PCB designers, the finished result can look different. Perhaps the differences are subtle or quite visibly noticeable, as each PCB designer has their own unique design style, where items that are imitable or fixed can be tailored and unique. For example, very rarely does a PCB designer kick off an auto router and is 100% satisfied with the finished result. Typically, PCB designers will choose to handwrite physical interface connections or sections of highly constrained buses like DDR. Nets with T-points, clocks, transmit and receive traces, RF circuitry, etc. are also considered for partial or complete pre-routing. And trace characteristics like corner champers and tuning are just some of the other design elements that may vary from designer to designer. PCB designers are passionate and meticulous about their work. It's a job that requires a vast array of knowledge, skills, and attention to detail. Most importantly, they have a unique passion for electronics design. They enjoy the mental challenge and sense of gratification and pride for their contributions to the end products that their designs are created for. So to review, I referred to PCB design as a complex puzzle. You start with a design envelope that provides a frame, a set of components that need to be logically and strategically placed, and a schematic diagram with guides and rules that represent how the components are interconnected. There is, however, no picture provided on the top of a box of a finished product since every place component Trace, pad, and other feature is by design. With the aid of electronic design CAD software, PCB designers both pilot and navigate through each design aspect, applying their education and experience with the goal of first pass design success, developing design habits that expedite design completion, improving design quality, and enhance productivity are all instrumental for the highly efficient PCB design. Well, I hope you found the information in this podcast interesting. As always, be sure to check out all of the podcast show notes. There, you'll find a link to the full transcript of this podcast, as well as my email address where you can send me your comments and questions. I'm John McMillan, and thanks for listening. And be sure to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast app to listen to past podcasts. And be sure to catch the next episode of PCB Tech Talk.